Thanks for checking out Excel Exposure. Make sure you go to the Master Workbook page to download the most recent version of the workbook. Today I will be going over some advanced pivot table options and functions to help you understand a little bit more beyond the basics of pivot tables that the Introduction to Pivot Table video provided. The first thing I will be going over are some additional pivot table options which can be found by right clicking the pivot table and going to pivot table options. You'll see that we have multiple tabs here which have different options. I'll just go through some of them that I find particularly useful. First down bottom you'll see that there's a for error values show and for empty values show. You'll see that currently I have empty values showing as blank so there's all these blanks in our table. If I wanted to instead put zeros in place of the blanks. I could put a zero in here and hit OK and you'll see that the pivot table updates with zeros as well. You can also change for error values to show. I'll put an error and I won't actually show you how that works yet but later on when I show you an additional option that will result in errors you'll see this error come up and we can take a look at that. Under the Totals and Filters tab, you'll see that it has options to show grand totals for rows and grand totals for columns. If you unclick that, you'll see that the grand total for rows goes away. And if I do the same thing for columns, the totals go away there. So depending on what you want to show, you can get rid of either of those. On the Display tab, there's a field list where you can have it sort in different order, either A to Z or in source order of the data. So if you ever have the case where you wanted to sort it alphabetically, this is where you'd find that option. And lastly, on the Data tab, you'll see that it has this option to refresh data when opening the file. That's in case your data gets updated partially, maybe through some data connection that it has, and you want it to refresh when the file opens. So I'll click that as well and hit OK. Another cool option that the pivot table allows is to drill down into each of the values and see what makes up that range. So for example if we go to January and look at binder which shows 218 units sold if we double click that you'll see that it adds an additional sheet which only includes the January binder sales and if you look at this unit total here, you can see that it's 218, which is the same as January for binders. In addition, you can also do this for row and column totals. So you'll see if I look at the 396 for January, or if I looked at the 1472 for binder, so let's double click on that, you'll see easily all the data that's related to that amount extracted and put into its own worksheet. And you can see the sum matches. The next piece will be related to the values that you can show in the table. Since we're only pulling in the unit totals for items, this just shows us the number of units sold. But if we wanted to do some different analysis on that and show it in a different way, there are some options here in the values section of the pivot table field list. If you click the drop down, you'll see that there's a value field settings option. If you click that, you'll see that you can choose between different calculations like sum, count, average, and then there's also this show values as here there's a drop down menu with many different options for how you could show that value in the table. For example, if you wanted to show each of the values as a percentage of the grand total units sold, click that, hit OK, and you'll see that the total here is 100% and each one of the monthly amounts is shown as a percentage of that whole. Plus you can see the grand total percentages, all of which will add up to 100 on both sides. You could also show the values as a percentage of the parent row total, which is useful if you wanted to see by month 
what the sales were like in terms of percentages and you could also do the same thing with percentage of parent column total. There are many different options in this value field setting so feel free to mess around with that. If you have different data that can be sliced and diced in, in this particular manner. If I did one that I know will come out in an error like rank largest to smallest and I pick units and I hit OK you'll see that that error message that I put in earlier in the pivot table options is what shows up when we have an error value. If I change that to say oh no you'll see that it says that as well. And the last piece I will go over is a little bit of formatting options that you have in terms of the row labels. So let's say in addition to having binder, desk, pen, and so on, we wanted to also have the employee breakdown for each of those items. We can take the employee, drag it down to this row labels area, and you'll see that each of the employees is shown with their totals to the right for each of the labels. There are a few options for how you can show these row labels. If you click into item and field settings, you'll see there are some options here for how these subtotals are done. For example, you could have average, so instead of it showing the total up here, which would be 218 for this January binder, it shows the average of the employees. But if we wanted to leave the subtotals the same way, and wanted to display it a little differently, you can go to this Layout and Print tab and you'll see that it has a couple options under the currently selected layout. If I get rid of display labels from the field in the same column, you'll see that it moves it over to the right side instead of having it directly underneath binder. If I go in and get rid of subtotals at the top of each group, you'll see that it adds the subtotals down to the bottom of each group. The other option here is show item labels in tabular form, which you'll see puts it into the column over and brings it up to the top so that there's no subtotal at the top, but instead at the bottom. If you wanted, you could also insert a blank line after each item label and that way it'll break each piece up so it's a little bit more easy to read. And those are just a few options for how you can format it, but if you play around with any of the field settings, you can find out different ways of doing it. Hope you found that lesson useful, and feel free to post any comments or feedback in the comment section. Thanks.